What makes a good teacher is the passion that that teacher has for what she does, not only for what she thinks is good for her or for him, but for the good of the students. And because as a good teacher, we know that we're doing our best for the future because the students are gonna be the future. So a good teacher is someone who gives everything for the students. And even though we are going to face obstacles and we're gonna have some challenges, but if we do it with passion, with love, um, is what I believe that that makes a good teacher. First of all, we need to connect with them. We need to understand their necessities. We need to be aware of the way they learn because there's different uh, learning abilities. And as a teacher, we need to have that connection with them. What I think is missing in the classroom is um, time. We always running out of time. And we want to do a lot of things with the students and we want to expand more the way of teaching and the abilities for, for the students to learn. But because of the lack of time, I believe it's an obstacle that we have as a, as a teacher. What inspires me to go to work every, every day is to see my little ones when I just come to school and they know that I am going to be there for them. I have no words to, to, to explain the joy that for me is being a teacher. I had an experience um, like 10 years ago and I had this little girl she had a special needs, and this little girl was not able to speak, not even a word, not even teacher. And when she came to school, she used to say, chicha, chicha, chicha. And it was amazing at the end of the year how this little girl, she learned how to say teacher. She was um, very independent by herself. So that is one of the memorable experiences that I had. Trying to be the, the best employee the campus can have is doing your job with all your heart. Doing it because of the kids, treating them like it, they were yours. You want them to be safe at all times. You don't know when they're gonna bump into each other. They don't think about the risk or the danger that they can be, and that's when you have to be there for them. Your responsibility as an employee is to be, make sure that they're safe. It's important to build positive relationships with the students and the teachers because you're with them most of the time. They're like a family. You spend sometimes more time with them than with your family. Positive. I try my best to be positive and look for the best in every person, the best in every child. And yeah, the kids, mm, they can make your day. Sometimes they, they're going to some, some stuff at home that you just want them to be at the school and feel like they're at home. Feel that they can feel what a family is. Sometimes they don't have it at home. When parents come up to you and they recognize your job, when you do it without thinking, they're, they're gonna do that. Those are the best experiences for me, that the parents can see that. I think what makes a good teacher is you get to know your students, you get to know your, the people you work with, the teachers, and I think that you become a lifelong learner. You have to go to in-services, you have to do research, you have to find what works for your students to make them succeed. It is uh, very important because, you know, they come to you sometimes knowing nothing, so you have to nurture them, you have to care for them, 
you have to know that you're there for them and this can help them to learn to grow and perhaps you know succeed in school and become productive citizens. I think the number one thing is uh, probably uh, the lack of resources. As a bilingual teacher we struggle to find resources to in Spanish. We have a lot of them in English and they're very good resources but sometimes that these kids are not, these students are not ready for all English so we need to provide them first with their native language and resources with their native languages so we that's what I feel we, we lack. My students uh, they when I see that they're working towards their goal, that they're working hard, that they don't give up, that's what gets me up in the morning because I feel I have, I have to do a job. I have accountability. I have a responsibility towards these kids to get them, uh, to make them successful in school. I think one of my memorable moments is when, um, four years ago, I, um, I had a student, he wasn't my student, he was another teacher student, and he had brain cancer. So my memorable moment with him is that I put, provided these services for him. He was able to learn in spite of, of his illness. And this is, um, parents were wonderful with me, uh, very uh, understanding of, I had to go work Saturdays, I had to go work Sundays. But I think that's was uh, memorable because he recovered and he was able to return to class. A good employee is a person who's responsible, who shows respect, who takes pride in their work, who is always willing to help others and provides the best customer service at all times. It's very important to build positive relationships with both teachers and students because uh, you always want them to know that if they need anything, you're always there for them. Um, in my case, I have students come after school and they rely on me helping them out, whether it's contacting a parent to get picked up or you know, even assisting them with some homework while they're waiting. And teacher relationships are very important to let them know that you're there to help out in anything that, that they might need. The one word I think would best describe me would be enthusiastic. I believe the that word describes me because I, I really enjoy what I do. I love working with the teachers, the students, the principal. I have an awesome team and I feel that I'm always enthusiastic about everything that I do. The, the one thing that inspires me to come to work every day is my job. I, I love what I do. I, I, it's, it has become a passion to me. I, I love to work with the budget. More than anything, I love to uh, make sure that our students and our teachers have all the resources that they need and I know they rely on me to do so and that is one of the reasons that inspires me to wake up and get to work every morning. The most memorable experience that I can remember is the first time that I submitted a, a purchase order. Um, or actually an order, I want to say. I, I was told by my boss, you know, we need to order all these things from this company, go ahead and call them. And so I was new at this. I didn't know how the, the process worked. I called the company. I placed an order of about 30 items. Next thing you know, I was called in by the chief financial officer, Mr. Rivas. I had to go into his office and actually input a purchase order and I had to input items one at a time and I remember that was the longest maybe 15 minutes ever. What makes a good teacher? Um, dedication is one of the biggest keys. Uh, you really need to love your craft and what you do. Obviously being prepared is right next along with it. You have to do your homework, you have to prepare, you have to have the tools necessary for you to succeed. And if not, then you, you find a way. But dedication will get you to be more prepared. They need to know your expectations, they need to know that you're there. As a teacher, you're getting better, that's the main thing. But you get to that through respect, through showing them what you're there for. So you build rapport with them, you talk to them, you do value them because once they feel value, once they feel that they're not going to be criticized for mistakes or things that they're doing, and they'll, they'll be more open to it because obviously they're there to learn. So they don't know how, they don't have all the answers, 
So right there you're gonna supply, you know, the information, how to find it, and you can only do that through a good relationship with them. The number one thing missing in the in schools, in classroom, um, that's, that's interesting because I don't look at it that way. I look at it as what do I have, what tools do I need to, to get the kids where they need to be. Obviously, everybody will love more technology, more hands-on activities. I mean, doing it is a lot better than just hearing about it. So I guess the tools with regard to that. Um, but other than that, I believe, you know, we have what we need. It was the children. I, I love my job. I love the new position I'm in. Um, I, I can see I'm making an impact with them, not just academically, obviously, since I'm the coach, I'm focused more on them learning life habits, you know, how to develop that, how to become a better person because with, with more exercise, more energy, and your brain works better, it's just the impact is a lot better. So the students motivate me to go to school every day. And this is, goes back to when I was to be a kindergarten teacher, fourth grade, you know, when the students learn something, when they finally solve something on their own, uh, the enthusiasm in their face, um, when, when you have the little ones the impact is academically, it's greater in the sense that they didn't know how to read, now they can read, they can decode. And um, so that's one of the, my, my biggest memories uh, is talking to parents when they tell me that their child just got it. That's what I remember. I believe a good employee is somebody that really feels they belong in this district. I'm talking about our district. Uh, they're willing to learn and grow because there's a lot of room to grow here. And I believe a good employee is very loyal to, to not only the boss, but employees and your coworkers and um, are ready for changes. With so many years that I've been here, I think uh, we've experienced that constantly, moves and changes and, and still getting along with the same people that are working with you. I think that would make a big difference in an employee. You need to know your students. You need to know how every day, I mean, every day we see them, I think we spend more time with them than their parents and they come to us and we know when something's wrong. And we try very hard, like in our office, we try very hard for them to have a good day. Even if they're late, that's, they're already coming late because there was a problem. So we make them feel like, okay, you know, you're here, everything's gonna be fine, and let's go on to class. And we know the teacher's gonna greet them with that same loyalty. Because um, I love my job, and I love the people I work with, and I always want to do good. Some people think I'm kind of, kind of, <laughs> I see your smile, but <laughs> um, maybe kind of strong, but I love all my people. I've worked here, I wouldn't be working here. It's 25 years I've been working here and it makes a difference. My community, that I know them, that I live here, that I'm doing something good for them, that um, there's always room for improvement, Seeing my teachers work so hard and at the end of the day, it's all about our students. When I worked with Ms. Hopp, she was our principal at Borrego and um, we kept it a secret that she brought her dog to, class, to, the, <laughs> to the office and we had him there and Dr. Katrini came and we had the dog inside another room so nobody would know about it. <laughs> I think it was fun, it was exciting, and we kept it under the cover. All these years till now. <laughs> what makes a good teacher is the passion that he or she shows in the classroom, the report that they show to the students, that they have with the students, the communication with the colleagues, the parent involvement, does the teacher communicate a lot with the parents, um, also, showing different teaching styles to the students. We have a lot of learning styles. We do not learn the same, we do not speak the same. Fairness is very important. For example, 
if one student cannot comprehend when I'm teaching it orally, of course, always have some visuals, have auditory um, and audio for that student to comprehend it a little bit better. It is very important to build positive relationships with the students. This way, the students can already trust you. If a student cannot trust you, then there's never going to be any connections. I believe that the number one thing that is probably missing in schools, not only in Texas, but maybe nationwide, is more parent involvement. Um, a lot of parents right now, um, both the father and the mother are working, and it is very difficult for them to show up to the classroom, to show up in parent-teacher conferences. Maybe when we have to call them, they, they are not able to pick up and sometimes they're not able to receive the feedback that we have to give them for them to know how their child is doing. What inspires me to wake up in the morning and go to my workplace is for sure the students. You know, the learning process that I get from them, the learning process that is happening all over the classroom. Um, I teach them several things, but they also teach me a lot of things as well. For example, if we're having a discussion, I always say, hey, you know what, I didn't think about that. I never thought about that. And then when the students start to collaborate together, they all have different points of views and then we can all learn from each other. Not only that, every single day it's also a blank slate. If the previous day was bad for two students, three students, we can always rewind and say, hey, you know what, today's a fresh start, go ahead and start all over again. It's a brand new day. One of the most memorable experiences that I've had so far in teaching was probably from last year. Um, since I am a reading teacher, I had a student who did not like to read at all. We could see it from the day one as he stepped into my classroom. So day by day, you know, pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. And I was so proud of him because he has never passed the STAR test until he exited sixth grade. And I was very proud of him. And once he found out that he passed his STAR test, you know, he would send me emails, he would come visit me to my classroom saying, you know what, Ms. Tinajero, I'm so glad that you helped me, that you pushed me, even though I did not like to read. A good employee is someone that just enjoys what they're doing. As soon as they walk into the building, seeing the people's faces, the students, and saying good morning, good afternoon, have a good day. I think that's what makes a good employee. A positive relationship with students and teachers is to encourage them to do things that they're scared to do and give them a positive attitude towards it so they can enjoy what they do and think positive just to go on doing what scares them. I think I'm very energetic because I enjoy what I do. I like to work with the students. I'm very active with a lot of things for the students. I do Special Olympics, all the sports in the Special Olympics, volleyball, basketball, soccer, and uh, I do cheerleading. I've been doing that for about 20 years. And uh, I encourage kids to join sports and cheerleading or whatever it has to do, because sometimes students don't have the time or they won't give them the time of day when they go to middle school and high school and during the elementary school, that's when they can do everything. So I encourage them to do that. Even the special ed kids, I let them join the um, cheerleading because they will never have a chance to join in middle school or high school. So I enjoy that because I can see their faces, the students. That way I see them when I walk in, right away, right away, they, as soon as I'm walking in, they're saying good morning. I say good morning, have a good day. Remember, think positive, do all your work, and you'll succeed in your life. When I barely started with the cheerleaders, I had two special ed students and uh, they were so excited to be in cheerleading. One was a male, one was a female, and she, the, male, the female was in a, in a wheelchair. And they wanted to do their own stunts. And all they would do is like, he would get behind the wheelchair and he would do this, and she would do this, and that just made my day because they did it on their own. So that's what encouraged me, I love that. What makes a good teacher? A dedicated teacher, a passionate teacher, a teacher that believes in her students and pushes for them for everything that they need to do. You know, motivate them to be the best person they can be. Oh, I think that's a major factor. I mean, you don't want to be their friend, but you have to, you know, build positive relationships. When, you're, when you have that connection with a student, 
the students will do anything for you. They will rise to the, you know, above and beyond to do what you're asking them to do. So it's, that relationship is very important. You know, we need help with our psychological problems that our students are coming in with. You know, the baggage, all the risk factors that they're coming in with. I see that more and more, and I feel that we need more, more help with that. I feel that in our district, in my opinion, we need a big unit. Some of these kids, and with everything that's going on around the nation, with kids shooting, you know, killing others, I think that's one of the things we need more. We need more mental help in our schools. The challenges, that's my inspiration every day, the challenges I have for my students, the challenges that the students bring to the table. Middle school is a totally different animal. It's not the same every day. It's not the same every day. It, there's something new every day. Teenagers at this age are very interesting kids. I love it. You know what, I've had many memorable moments. I can think, you know, I think every year I try to stash one moment in my, in my life, I guess, in my teaching life. I've been doing this for so long. There's a particular student that everybody says he misbehaves with, you know, with everybody else. And I was in, I, I tell people he behaves well in my class. And I kept thinking, oh, it's because maybe the kids that he's with, maybe it's the, you know, he feels intimidated. I was giving credit to everybody else, to the environment. Yesterday, or sometime during the week, earlier in the week, somebody asked him, why do you behave with Ms. Gonzalez? And he said, because she listens to me. And, I, and the teacher came and told me, did you know that he said that? That he behaves with you because you listen? Oh, I said, I wasn't giving myself credit. I was like thinking it was the environment, thinking because, you know, and you know, those little things with students, you think it doesn't make a difference, but it does make a big difference. So I think that's my final answer. <laughs>a determined employee. A determined employee who's willing to do anything that comes with the position. For my position as instructional specialist, um, it is important to, um, to be there for everybody, to be there for the teachers, to be there for the students, to um, work with them, to be a team player. So to me, that, that comes with the, to being an employee. With my position, it's, I'm kind of in the middle because I am there to support teachers as far as trainings, um, creating lessons. But at the same time, I have to keep in mind the students because um, our students, they, they're all different levels. I mean, there's so many different challenges with our students. So I always have to keep that in mind when I do help, when I work with the teachers. Okay, remember that we, ha we do have this population of students. We need to work with them. We need to um, maybe make it a less rigorous, but yet still target what we need to do as far as the teeth. The best word that describes me, I would say persevering. The reason why is because I'm determined. Um, I, want, I complete tasks, I don't stop. Okay, no matter what, I, I want to complete it. Um, if I know, uh, let's say there's a teacher in need, I, I can't rest until I see that teacher become successful, even if it takes that year or even until the next year. So, um, also, as far as our students, um, I work with our teachers to make our students successful. So, as, I mean, I work with middle school students. So that's already a challenge as it is. So by being persevering, you can't stop. You have to keep on, keep on working. I would say the number one thing that makes, uh, inspires me to go to work every day is it's refreshing, but yet it's an asset for the teachers to know that they have somebody they could count on as far as instruction. Um, I, as a former teacher, um, I remember how overwhelming it is to have 145 students or 150 students and teach them in those 45 minutes. Looking back, I would have loved to have had someone that I could count on, you know what, I have a lesson to, and I need, I need help to see how I could carry it out in my class, especially with the population of kids that I have. So just to me, I just find that refreshing that our, our teachers know that they have that. And it did take a while, it took years for them to understand that's what Ms. Hara is there for, that's what Brenda is there for, so that she could support us with anything we need with our students. We do bring teachers together. We unite them, we have them work together. So to me, that's memorable. When I see all our teachers working together, for example, uh, a department, a reading department, I see them all together, they're sharing, oh, you know what, I wanna try this, oh, I like what you're doing in your class. Um, can you come to my class and show me that? So it, it's, I, my memorable thing is that I united our teachers without even thinking, that's not what I was, I was trying to do, but it happened that way. Okay, not that they weren't united before, but 
it just made them more united and had them work together more. I think what makes an effective teacher is a teacher that is going to take the effort to connect with their students in the very first days of school because once they connect with their students then everything that comes thereafter will then be much more easier. So connecting with the students will be primary and then teaching will be secondary. And what also would make an effective teacher is also a teacher that is very passionate about their subject. If they like what they do and the kids see it, they're also maybe willing and more inclined to uh, follow through with you. It's very important to create positive relationships because these kids, they really want you to know who they are. So if you get to know who they are, what are their sports, what interests do they have, what hobbies do they have, how are they involved in the campus, they see that you're invested in them, so then they'll invest in you in the long term throughout the whole year. And maybe the number one thing is that connection. Some teachers at this high school level really want to get kids ready for the college level or something in the future, and maybe they don't reach out and make connections with their students. They just want to jump straight into the content and then they notice that there's not a lot of positive interactions with the students and the teacher to enhance their learning. Teachers have to make that connection. If they don't, then they're just teaching kids as if they're in college, but we have to recognize they're not in the university setting yet. We still have to know who they are, what are they interested in, so that you can incorporate that into their education. I think the number one thing that inspires me to go to work is just seeing these kids be successful in the class, outside of the class, and for me personally, in the dual credit course that I teach, giving them an opportunity in this community to give them college credit, I think it's something very valuable for them. They've never had this opportunity before, so I think it's nice that we have this for them. So every day I want to work for not only our college-bound kids, but then for our freshmen that I teach, hopefully they can be invested in getting towards that level. So every day I think it's just you know trying to enjoy who they are and incorporate them into the lesson. And I think every day, if they bring you a smile, I think that's the most important thing. That's what makes it worth it to go to work every day. Most memorable moment, I would have to say, would be the first year. I think every teacher that goes to their first year, it's a struggle. And then you add on, I was in an Algebra 1, which is a tested subject, so those scores are very important. And when we got the results back and we saw the kids' happiness and seeing that they passed the test, that was super exciting. Just to see that, okay, I got it, I got the job done, so did the kids get, and they also got it done. And I think that was the most beautiful part, is I saw the connection between all the hard work we put for, from August to June, and it all culminated through this test. And seeing them so happy and, it, and excited that they passed the test was validating, and that has been one of the number one things that I really look for as we go through each year at the end, is seeing this, the happiness and the joy of the students, because they work so hard and it culminates with a, a number of passing the test. So I think that was very special. Pues yo pienso que el echarle muchas ganas a su trabajo, estar bien con todo lo que nos ponen a hacer, hacerlo de positivos, contentos. Es lo que yo pienso. Tener mucho positivismo en el empleo, venir con buena voluntad, contentos. Pienso que es, es algo para empezar bien su trabajo todos los días. Ser amable con todos, con los maestros, cuando necesiten de uno, pues ir con, con buena actitud. Creo que es bueno tener buenas relaciones con los maestros y estudiantes. Con los maestros, cuando usted tiene buena relación con ellos, ellos sienten seguridad para pedirle a uno un favor o algo, ¿verdad? Con los estudiantes es lo mismo. Si usted está al pendiente de ellos, tienen confianza con uno, a veces le pueden platicar a uno sus problemas que tienen, y yo me siento a gusto con ellos y con los maestros. Me gusta que estén contentos ambos conmigo y yo doy lo mejor de mí. Pues yo pienso que es mi carácter, ¿verdad? Porque Yo siempre estoy contenta. Me piden un favor y yo nunca voy molesta. A mí me gusta hacer las cosas con, con voluntad y ganas. Tanto me, me lo piden el favor los maestros como los estudiantes y yo a los dos, con los dos soy igual. Me gusta estar al pendiente de ellos para lo que necesiten de mí. A mí, en primer lugar, me gusta mucho mi trabajo. Yo lo disfruto al máximo mi trabajo. 
Yo todos los días vengo contenta. No sé, es, es un, me gusta como lo que hago ahorita en las mañanas. Es diferente el trabajo en la noche, pero yo estoy muy contenta en las mañanas trabajando. Y si me toca de noche también, me gusta el trabajo como es. Yo tengo un momento así que lo puedo ver como las tres cosas, ¿verdad? Bonito, memorable, inolvidable. Fue la primera vez que me mandaron a poner las banderas. Es algo que nunca se me va a olvidar. Yo no sabía en realidad cuál bandera iba arriba, cuál bandera iba abajo. Y yo, yo decía, Ay, Dios mío, pues ¿cómo pongo estas banderas? Y yo estuve, piense y piense, y yo dije, bueno, pues creo que van así. Y las puse al revés, ¿verdad? Y así duraron todo mediodía, hasta que vino Mr. Lueva y dijo, ¿quién puso las banderas? Pues yo las había puesto, ¿verdad? Yo hice la lucha de ponerlas, porque me daba vergüenza preguntar, que yo ¿cómo iba? No podía saber cómo iban las banderas. Y eso es algo que nunca se me va a olvidar. Que me da risa, de, ahora me da risa va acordarme de eso. Pero en ese momento pues yo tenía nervios, vergüenza, quién sabe, tenía de todo.